Welcome to Equine Guelph's Research Radio, a monthly look at the cutting-edge research being done at Equine Guelph, brought to you by SSG Gloves. Our guest this week is Dr. John Prescott. He's on the leading edge of research into a disease affecting mostly foals that you'll want to know about. That's next on Research Radio, but first... SSG Gloves is also on the cutting edge. The SSG All Weather is the most popular of all weather gloves in the industry worldwide. Quality, durability, well, it wears like an iron and washes like a rag. Breathable, AquaSuede Plus Palm gives you a very good grip on the lines, wet or dry. And the elasticized back gives a cool, comfortable fit. The SSG All Weather. See your local SSG dealer. For more info, go to SSGridinggloves.com. Dr. Prescott, welcome to Research Radio. Great. Thanks, Noel. Tell us about this specific disease that is affecting foals. What's it called? What's, what does it do? And, and what's being done to, to combat it? The, the disease is called necrotizing enteritis, which is a rather long term for uh, meaning uh, death in the intestine of foals, death of the small intestine. So it's a bacterial infection caused by a bacterium called Clostridium perfringens that sometimes causes food poisoning in people. But the strain we see in foals is very specific to foals, and it's seen as a cause of serious enteric disease, serious intestinal disease in foals of about one week of age or less. What we've discovered, which has been really um, great, is that this Clostridium perfringens produces a a toxin, a, a, a new toxin that's never been described before, which causes the cell death. And we've called the toxin NEDF. So we've been able to prove in in different ways that this toxin is responsible for this serious infection of of young foals. And we've also been able to show that you can immunize horses uh, with the toxin and produce antibody. So what excites us is that we think now that it will be possible to include the toxoid, uh, an inactivated version of this toxin in a vaccine for mares uh, to prevent the disease in foals. So if mares are vaccinated with the NETF toxoid, they will give antibody in their milk to baby foals, as is all normal, and that will actually prevent this um, this infection from establishing. So for us, we think this is a a really important uh, advance in understanding serious intestinal disease of baby foals. It uh, also allows us potentially to include this in a vaccine, maybe in a vaccine that's used to prevent viral enteric diseases of foals and other other bacterial infections. So uh, it could be put as a sort of combined mare vaccine to stop intestinal disease in foals. Now, this is passed on from the mare to the foal, correct? Um, we're not sure. It, it comes from the the environment. It comes from the soil. It, it not, it's not necessarily passed on from the mare. We need to know more about where this organism is actually found. We're not sure that actually it's part of being a horse. We we, we still need to uh, to find out about that. It could be coming from from soil and and various sources in the soil. Now, studies have revealed that the vast majority of, of horses affected are foals. I think it was something like 27%. Why, why is that? As opposed to the other part of the study, which shows that only 7% of mature horses uh, suffer from this, uh, this malady. Um, it, it's a good, very good question. I think the, the reason is that mares... Uh, in the the colostrum of mares, that's the milk that's first given, the foals first get when when they're born. There's a very special part of the milk of mares called colostrum. It has in it inhibitors of of uh, proteases, and that's a bit, again a bit complicated. But why it has inhibitors of proteases is is it's needed to stop the um, the pancreatic enzymes in the intestine of foals from breaking down the antibodies that they get from the mare, which they then absorb into 
into their bloodstream you know, as part of, sort of the development of their immune response. And I think this bacterium, this Clostridium perfringens, is taking advantage of those trypsin in, uh, of the trypsin inhibitors to, um, to which would normally trypsin or well, the pancreatic enzymes would break down the, the toxin but because there's trypsin inhibitors in colostrum they're unable to do it so that's why it's seen in the first days of life in foals. And uh, as an interesting side uh, I understand the other species largely affected by it are, are dogs correct? Yeah, and that, that was really a, a major surprise to us that we found the same bacterium in, in dogs causing, again, very severe disease in dogs. It's called hemorrhagic gastroenteritis, and it's the same organism. Norm, in, in dogs, it's mostly seen in small breed dogs, and small breed dogs are well recognized to often have pancreatic uh, disease, and, and if they have pancreatic disease, then they won't be producing pancreatic enzymes. And again, the, the, I think the bacterium is taking advantage of those circumstances. So how close are we to developing a vaccine then? It seems like well, we're very close. Well, we, 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 all the ducks are in order in some ways because we've, we've purified the proteins. The protein, we, we've shown you can immunize horses, you get very good antibody levels. And so what we're trying to do is to interest uh, vaccine manufacturers to actually include this protein in, in, in a vaccine for mares. And so it's a matter of, in some ways, um, the market and market size and, and getting a vaccine manufacturer or people making vaccines to say, yes, it's worthwhile to in, include this in, the, uh, in, in a vaccine. Well, and, and so it, it's, it's close. It's, it's as, as close as we can get to interesting uh, somebody to, to do this for us because we obviously went on in the business to... Uh, to make vaccines, but we've got all the all the information, and all the evidence, and all the you know the E. coli which are producing this protein um, you know in in the lab. So we get everything is in order. We just we just need a, a good vaccine manufacturer. Well, it seems uh, like you're on the verge of doing something that is um, very much groundbreaking and uh, uh, certainly of interest to breeders, uh, I would think, and, and it's something that uh, is, is needed. Doctor, I, I want to thank you for being on Research Radio. Norm, thanks very much for your interest.